Good evening, and welcome to the show, Veterans Roundtable. This show is brought to you by the Filipino-American Retired Armed Forces Association in cooperation with the Vallejo Community Access Television, or BCAT. Folks, if it's Thursday, it's Veterans Roundtable Day. And the show is about veterans, veterans' issues, as well as other topics that we find relevant and meaningful to you, our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, today our guest is Mr. Dennis Kelly. He is an engineer and a former employee of the Mare Island Naval Shipyard. Not too long ago, we did a show about the Olympia. It's a battle cruiser, the only remaining ship in its class. And uh, we have a photo right here. And Mr. Kelly is leading the effort to bring the Olympia back home to Vallejo. It's good to have you back, Dennis. Well, thanks for inviting me back. Uh, I'm really excited to be, have the opportunity to finish our discussion about this fascinating ship. Thank you, Dennis. And, and folks, you will recall uh, that the last time Mr. Kelly was here, we tried to give you so much information, and uh, uh, 30 minutes just wasn't enough. So we had to bring him back. Um, and so, so Dennis, we, uh, we're glad to have you back. We, we have a photo of the Olympia. And for those of you that are, are tuning in uh, to watch the show, I'm going to have Mr. Kelly tell you a little bit more about the Olympia, uh, where it was built, and its ties to Mare Island. So the Olympia was built at Union Iron Works in San Francisco. It was launched in 1892. It, was, it basically operated out of Mare Island uh, from about 1894 through 1895 when it departed it to take its place as the uh, flagship of the Asiatic Squadron. So she has a tie to the Bay Area and she's operated from Mare, from Mare Island here in Vallejo. Right, and uh, one of the things unique about the Olympia, remember this, this goes back to the 1800s, and <laughs> this was a time when the ship's fuel is primarily coal. And so uh, uh, we have here a photo that was shared to us by uh, Mr. Kelly that the, uh, uh, this is what people look like after they uh, refuel the ship. And uh, at this point, I believe they're cleaning up. Uh, when, when they got done uh, uh, loading coal. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, at the time the ship was state-of-the-art, uh, but uh, of course the fueling part was a, a, a real messy, uh, a messy process. Um, uh, could you, uh, for those who missed the show the first time, could you uh, cover a little bit about uh, the ship's propulsion and, and the fact that it had refrigeration systems. Sure. Um, well, a, as Jess said, the ship was state-of-the-art for the time, and she was uh, one, of the one of the first ships to have triple expansion steam engines. There are actually two engines and combined horsepower with 17,000 horsepower. So that was quite a bit for the time. Uh, and she also was one of the first ships to have refrigeration. And you can believe me, the crews appreciated that in that time. Right. And that means uh, provisions were, were kept uh, fresh and uh, lasted longer. So uh, that is quite a treat. Um, the, uh, the other thing I was wondering, uh, uh, it's not on the script, but I, it just hit me now. Was air conditioning uh, even, uh, the technology was even... Not at the time. Uh. <laughs> not then, and uh, and actually, if you read the accounts of the battle in Manila Bay, that those engine rooms and those uh, uh, boiler rooms were in the 130 degree oh range. So God. I mean, it was yeah. it was miserable. Yeah. Right, and the water temperature is probably 85 or 90 degrees, so that didn't help no. matters. <laughs> uh. um, and you mentioned the ship was uh, assigned to the uh, Asiatic Squadron. Uh, and I did not know this, but there were actually, these units were actually based in Hong Kong. And so 
from there they were able to sail to Manila Bay and you pick up uh, pick it up from there where sure so what happened was uh, when war when war broke out uh, a telegram was sent to uh, uh, Admiral Dewey in Hong Kong and the instructions were all of about three sentence, sentences. It was he was to seek out and destroy the Spanish fleet. They sailed almost immediately for Hong Kong, or from Hong Kong to Manila Bay. And um, <clears throat> when they entered Manila Bay, uh, they were actually facing not only the Span Spanish fleet, but the forts in Manila Bay, as well as a mined harbor. Uh, and there were many people who thought that they were, they were not going to be returning. However, in what, what was one of the greatest naval battles of all time, they destroyed the Spanish fleet. And, and that makes the Olympia one of the most significant ships uh, that has sailed for the United States Navy. Unfortunately, today the Olympia is uh, not in the best shape she's ever been in, however. She's currently located in Philadelphia. Actually, this photograph shows her at, at her current berth. The hull is uh, deteriorated along the water, uh, water line where she's actually in danger of sinking in the spot that she's in. Uh, it's unfortunate, uh, uh, but it's created the opportunity for us to acquire the Olympia and bring her back here to Vallejo and put her in Mare Island's dry dock. Thank you, and I was reading up on it a little bit, but the, uh, the fleet, the Asiatic squadron actually, uh, under the leadership of uh, Admiral Dewey, uh, engaged the Spaniards, uh, uh, but they were actually outnumbered, and uh, to, to pull up a victory is, uh, was a really major event, and uh, Dennis, the significance of that victory? Uh, Basically, as a result of that victory, the United States went from being an isolationistic country to be, being a world power, and that was the beginning of our role as a world power, and for the Philippines, it was really the beginning of Philippine independence and the end of 300 years of Spanish rule. So this, there were some major, major events or crossroads as, as a result of this, uh, this naval battle. Right, and we, uh, we um, Mr. Kelly mentioned to you that the, uh, the Olympia at the moment is uh, in a uh, um, sad state of, of disrepair. Uh, just like anything else, funding is, uh, a major issue. Our economy isn't that great. And um, so because of that, the, uh, the future of the Olympia is in question now and, and its ability to stay afloat, uh, its material condition has deteriorated to a point where it's gonna require quite a bit of money to try and uh, put it back in, in, in good order. So. Uh, so, folks, now now you're uh, you've heard about the Olympia again, and f perhaps if you watched the initial show, your memory has been uh, refreshed. It is historically significant, and uh, it's the only remaining uh, ship of its kind. Correct? It's the Olympia is the oldest steel-hulled warship in the world. She's the only remaining uh, warship from the Spanish-American War from either side. Right. Right, and, and, and so uh, it would be a travesty uh, uh, to even think that something of this magnitude, a true American uh, historical treasure, uh, could be considered for uh, uh, a not a very good option, which is to sink it <laughs> and uh, turn it into a coral reef. That, that's horrible. And, and I personally believe that that should not happen, and I'm glad that Mr. Kelly and his uh, uh, group, uh, the Mare Island Historical Parks Foundation, are engaged and are willing to uh, uh, take the initiative to save this, uh, this American treasure. So um, let's get right into it, Dennis, and uh, I know uh, uh, this show has limited time as we <laughs> discovered uh, uh, the last time you were here. Uh, but the acquisition process is a little bit complex. Uh, but I know you've taken a couple of steps, major steps, uh, already at this point. And uh, there is a thing called a phase one. 
uh, if you could uh, explain that a little bit to our viewers. So essentially there's a, th a three phase process. The process was developed by the Independent Seaport Museum, which currently owns the ship. And it's a process to screen applicants of which we are one. Phase one of the process uh, is complete. And that was basically where, where we put together a fairly brief, about 20 page application that described where we would put the ship, how, how we would fund it, um, how we would operate it. And that was submitted a, a year ago and it, it was approved by the Independent Seaport Museum and a board. And uh, we were invited to participate in the next phase, which is phase two. Um, and we just recently completed phase two and got approval just a few days ago since our last uh, uh, interview. Uh, to proceed to the final phase, which is phase three. Uh, phase two was just a, a more detailed application, which included our operating and business plans uh, that basically that demonstrate that the monument will ge generate sufficient revenue to pay for itself. So, and so it really it highlighted what our real challenge is, and that challenge is to capitalize the effort. We require $20 million basically to get the ship repaired to tow it to Mare Island, and to do the site preps and planning that are required at Mare Island. Right, and <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago, uh, uh, there was another group uh, that was attempting to bring the Iowa to uh, Mare Island. Uh, there is a slight difference in the approach there was to uh, keep the Iowa uh, in the water. Uh, uh, and Mr. Kelly, I'm going to ask him to share with you, uh, our viewers, uh, their vision of uh, what's going to happen to the Olympia. If, if we're successful and we actually bring the ship here, uh, where would it go and how is that going to work? So the ship would go into Mare Island's dry dock number one. The dry dock is a historic dry dock. It was built in the 1800s. The Olympia has actually been in that dry dock in the past and it would be displayed out of water. Uh, that's significant because there's no longer would, be, would there be a concern about corrosion on the hull. We wouldn't have to worry about periodic dry dockings of the ship. And it actually, we feel, will make a better, a better display because you'll not only be able to see the Olympia, which is a national historic landmark, but you'll be able to see the dry dock and go basically under the ship. And the dry dock itself is a national historic landmark. So I, we think it will make for a, a great display and be more protective of the ship. Right, and uh, I hope you can see it at home on your TV screen. Uh, there's a, a photo of the Olympia. Uh, while it was actually uh, in the dry dock uh, at Mare Island, and the date on the photo is 1895. So it's not, it's not a great high definition photograph, and it's, it's kind of hard to see the, the blocks where the ship is sitting on, but this is actually dry dock one. And uh, the dry dock then is, is a historical treasure in it by itself. One of the first on the west coast and built, uh, they built it using uh, granite blocks. It's granite, right. built of granite blocks that were right. actually all brought down from the Sierra down the Sacramento River. So it's a, it's a yeah. story in of itself. Right. So you, you marry the two together, and I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Kelly and his group that uh, this makes for a really great uh, uh, historical museum uh, right in our backyard, folks. So uh, uh, I hope that you're, you're, we're getting your sympathy, and as we get deeper into the program, we will tell you more about how we think you might be able to get involved. Um, so it, it, it started with a, uh, a proposal, which is basically a business proposal, uh, phase one, phase two, and, and now they're into phase uh, three. Uh, just like anything else, um, Dennis, uh, I know you're going to need political support. Um, uh, and, and so I heard about this letter that was sent to Senator Feinstein. And could you tell the viewers a little bit, a little bit more about that letter? Sure. What it said. So, uh, just generally speaking, any of the of these warship displays that you will see anywhere in the country, 
do not receive a single penny of support from the United States government. It's entirely upon the organizations uh, to raise all of the money privately that funds these operations. Uh, we, do, we don't think that's right. Um, we think that there is a benefit to the Navy to provide some level of support for this ship because it's so important to naval history and, it, and telling the, really our national story in addition to, the, to the, the naval history story. So we submitted a proposal to uh, Senator Feinstein asking her to introduce legislation that would basically provide maintenance funds to repair the hull on the ship and to do that not by uh, adding another line item to the budget but simply allowing the Navy to use excess unspent funds from their current budget for that purpose. And right now, the Navy is precluded by law from, from giving a penny to any of these ships. So we're trying to get that, that uh, law changed so that, at least for the Olympia, which is probably one of the most unique warships in, in our country, historical warships, to provide, give the Navy the ability to fund that maintenance that's so necessary. Right, and uh, the hope is the, the senator uh, and her colleagues would uh, uh, see fit uh, the, that this is a, a project that has merit and uh, uh, the potential for it to succeed is uh, way more significant than uh, prior efforts. Uh, I wa I'm going to show you a photograph. There's a... Uh, I know we tried to bring the uh, USS Iowa to, to Vallejo, and uh, here's a photograph that uh, uh, you might have seen uh, in an earlier show, but it shows you the contrast, uh, help me out Dennis, uh, in terms of uh, the length uh, uh, of the two vessels uh, side by side. This is obviously Photoshop, but they were never really alongside. Uh, in reality, but you can see the contrast where uh, the Iowa would take such an enormous uh, uh, footprint wherever you put it in the water or uh, in a dry dock uh, compared to the Olympia, which is about what a third, a third of the size. It's really about twenty percent of the si the Olympia is about twenty percent of the size of the Iowa in terms of displacement. Yeah. Probably most significantly. Is, uh, it is the, the length, she's less than half the length, and then the, the draft. And the draft's very important because the Mare Island Channel has silted in since the Navy left. The Olympia, is, we've, we've already done bathymetric studies of the channel. The Olympia, basically, we can drive her all the way to dry dock one. We would just have to uh, dredge the very uh, uh, front of the dry dock, whereas the, uh, the Iowa dr dr uh, draws 36 feet that would require dredging the entire Mare Island Channel from the Cartina Straits to wherever it would be parked. So that would be a, a very expensive proposition and it's one we don't have to face. With right, the right. I, uh, I'm afraid to ask how much that would cost. <laughs> um, so, so again, uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see some political support uh, uh, to move this process along. Um, and you mentioned earlier there's some competition. It, it's not that we're the only ones trying to bring the Olympia to Vallejo. There are other organizations that are also interested. C could you name a couple of them? And uh sure. Um, actually, uh, I'll tell you the organizations that were involved uh, just up until this last uh, set of letters went out uh, approving us to go forward, because I have not heard the results of that with respect to the other organizations. But the ones that were in it. Uh, prior to that, where there's a group that wants to keep the ship right where she is in Philadelphia uh, without moving her. There's another group in Beaufort, South Carolina, that wants to put her in a dry dock um, that, uh, that was used in last in the 1930s on Paris Island. And then there's a group that wants to bring her uh, to Washington, D.C. and put her on the Potomac under a, in a copper da dam under a glass, some sort of a glass building. Hmm. So those are the three concept. groups. And, and uh, your level of confidence, sir, uh, <laughs> well, as far as our opportunities for... Uh, you know, actually, my level of confidence is very high. Um, we only, only Mare Island has a dry dock that was in use, not 
in, in the 1990s dock, docking nuclear submarines. It's in great shape. And um, <clears throat> the, other, the other groups uh, either have huge capitalization <coughs> costs that make our challenge actually look quite simple, um, or they want to leave it where it is, where, and it's failing where it is. So um, I, I, you know, our challenge boils down to very simply, we have to raise the money to capitalize our effort. If we do that, I think we will you know, win the competition and that ship will be here and we'll have 143,000 people every year coming to Mare Island and Vallejo to go see that ship. That's, that's terrific and, and folks, we, we need something like that to boost up our city. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, if you're following the news, uh, we, we had some bumps along the road. Uh, our city, unfortunately, uh, had to file uh, Chapter 9. Uh, but recently, a couple of cities uh, way bigger than us. Vallejo has 115,000 people. Uh, Stockton, uh, you saw in the news, they are a city of 300,000. And they also filed for bankruptcy. Uh, there's another city, I believe, uh, uh, it escapes me at the moment. I think it's back east, but but those are some of the things. You know, the 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 economic uh, downturn, the housing collapse, the housing market collapsing. Uh, those aren't helpful to the city of Vallejo. But this is something very very positive, and I think we all should uh, jump in and try to help out. And that's a good segue actually to uh, uh, talk about. Uh, you know, you've heard about the Olympia, the history, the significance. Uh, it's now time to give in the time remaining. Uh, let's give Mr. Kelly an opportunity to tell you uh, what you can do uh, to help uh, this effort uh, become a success. Uh, beginning with, uh, do you think that they should write their uh, leaders in Congress? Well, the, uh, absolutely. Um, I'm going to make a recommendation. I'm sure we can get it put on the screen. Uh, but I would recommend that you go to the Mare Island Historic Park Foundation website, uh, and, and we'll just get it put on the screen. Yeah. The, um, it, when you go there, uh, there's a, a Olympia events page. And on that page, there's all the information that you would need in, 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 in to, to write your congressman or senator about this legislation I discussed that would fund the repairs to the hull. You can literally just cut out, cut out the statements that are, that are on there and paste them into an email, and everything's there to tell you where to send it uh, and who to. Um, the other thing you can do that would help us is you can join the Mare Island Historic Park Foundation. It's a nominal cost. The information is also on the website for how to do that. Um, and then you can donate to our, to our effort. If you donate and say you, it, you want that money to go to the Olympia, it will only go to the Olympia. That's the only thing it will be used for. So those are three things that you can do, uh, and you kind of you can figure out how to do it on the by just by referring to our website. Okay, and uh, uh, the Mare Island Historic Parks Foundation is a 501c3 organization. Yes, it's a nonprofit. So uh, so any donations are are tax deductible. Right. Um, the other thing, uh, and I'm keeping my eye on the clock here. Um, just briefly, Dennis, uh, we mentioned that the hall. Uh, of the Olympia is a little bit compromised uh, due to AIDS and, and lack of really uh, maintenance. Uh, I think it never saw a dry dock in what, 65 years? Last time in a dry dock was 1945. <laughs> so, <laughs> and a you, long time. As somebody who drove ships, you know yeah. <laughs> what that means. And, and, and so, um, uh, uh, where the Iowa was towed uh, uh, from back east, all the way to California, uh, the Olympia, uh, that's not an option, right? We, we have to find another way to bring her here? Or? Well, no, we could, we could tow we her. Could tow we, her. Need to re we need to repair the hull to do Make that. It seaworthy Our and other right. option is to put her on a heavy lift ship, which uh, offers the possibility of, of uh, avoiding the repair costs. But uh, we're not there yet. But that, there we have two options to get her here. OK. Um, so, you know, folks, you've been fully briefed. Uh, you, you've heard about us, about us talking about the history of the ship, the significance of the ship, 
uh, its current condition and why it's important to, to bring her back to Vallejo. Uh, we've shown you some photographs. And I believe it's entirely possible, uh, although the Iowa effort was difficult, uh, uh, the Olympia is different. And so, I, Dennis, I'd like to give you one final opportunity to address our viewers. Uh, um, I have here, uh, uh, when we edit the show, we'll have contact information for you, uh, telephone number, email. But one, your final thoughts, comments to viewers. Uh, you and I agree it'll be a very sad uh, day if, if the effort to save the Olympia fails and they decide to do the inevitable at that point when there's no funding, uh, no caretaker, just sink it and make a coral reef out of it. That would be a travesty. Uh, so I'll give you an opportunity to speak to our viewers and hammer sure. down the... So the, Olymp the Olympia, I, I mean, as I agree, it would, it would be a travesty. The Olympia is an American icon, uh, uh, every much, uh, every bit as much as the Statue of Liberty. The, the, Olymp the Olympia was welcomed back to New York by a land parade that went on for three days with over three and a half million people. Wow. There wasn't a person in this country that didn't know who the Olympia was. The news was full of it for months. Uh, at, you know, we've forgotten. Uh, but sh but her what that ship accomplished and those crews accomplished remains and it, it, it influences what's going on today. If you go down to San Francisco to U our Union Square, there's a monument to Admiral Dewey and to the Olympia. You've probably seen it many times, and I'll bet most of the viewers probably don't know what it what it stands for. I didn't, um, but it's a monument fr from the people of San Francisco to this ship and to Admiral Dewey. So she's a she's an absolute priceless gem. I agree, and and folks, we are out of time. I'd like to thank our special guest, Mr. Dennis Kelly. Thank you. He is actually the project manager of the effort to bring the Olympia back to Vallejo, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank the management of Vallejo Community Access Television, my producer, Sabrine Freeman. Uh, today's floor director is uh, a young lady, Tiffany Tolentino, thank you. On our camera, we have uh, Anita Linker, Clarence Payne, uh, VCAT, our office is managed by Jackie Nelson. She's not here, but I thank her as well. Uh, and uh, last but not least, the man in charge of graphics and film editing who's been helping me do the show, uh, my good friend, Mr. Miro Salazar. Uh, also, I'd like to thank you, our viewers. This show don't mean anything without you. This is your host, Jess Mogapo, signing off. Thank you and good night.